Welcome back everyone, Dan Vega here, and let's talk a little bit about Spring Boot 1.4.0 Milestone 2. Uh, this was released a couple days ago, and I've had a chance to go through a lot of the new features. And over the next couple of videos, we're just going to talk about a few of the nice features that uh, came out in 1.4, and really just go through a couple examples. So I will link to the blog post written up by Phil Webb that gives a nice overview of everything that kind of came out in this milestone release. And as I said, I'm going to walk through a couple examples over the next few videos and we'll just dive in and, and take a look at a couple of these. So if you go down in that blog post, there's actually a link to the release notes. I'm a dork like this. I love reading the release notes because it really gives you the, the gritty down low of what was actually done. So we're in 1.4.0 Milestone 2. Uh, you can see Milestone 3 was there. Uh, I'm talking Milestone 2 today. And so we're going to go through a lot of these, but I want to focus on one specific thing today. And that is that we upgraded uh, to Spring Framework 4.3. So Spring Boot 1.4 builds on and requires Spring Framework 4.3. So what does that mean to us? Well, that means there's a few, a uh, couple new things going on in 4.3 that are pretty helpful. And if you go over to the Spring Framework documentation, which I will link to as well, there's also a link for new in 4.3. So Spring Framework kind of talks about what they brought to the table in 4.3. And so I'm just going to go through one that, that kind of caught my eye. And let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this. So I'm going to create a new project in IntelliJ. Let's go ahead and create a new project. I'm using the Spring Initializer. I'm using Java 1.8. Um, go ahead and next. All right, we're going to call this AutoWired because that's what it has to do with. We're looking at using Java version 1.8. Java, let's say this is Field damn Vega, auto wire, that's fine, that's fine. Next. All we really care about here is a web project, but we do need to make sure that we change the Spring Boot version to 1.4.0 milestone 2. So let's choose that and click next. We're gonna have auto wired. That looks good to me. Let's go ahead and finish. And when our application pops up here, you can see if we open up our palm, nothing crazy going on here. All we have is that Spring Boot Starter Web dependency. And again, this is just a basic example, but I think it's pretty cool. So we have our main Spring Boot application here. And I'm going to go ahead and create a new package. And we'll call this, let's say, um, controller. And I'm going to create one more new package. And we'll call this service. And let's go ahead and create a new class inside of our controller. So let's call this a book. Actually, let's just do hello controller. So we're going to have a normal controller here. We're going to go ahead and annotate this. We'll say this is a REST controller. And we're going to create one method here. And we're going to have a request mapping of Let's just say home. Actually, we'll just give it the slash. And we'll call this public string home. This is just going to return, return home. OK, so nothing crazy going on here, right? And actually, we're going to change this to return something else in a second. OK, so now this is a normal scenario. We have a controller. And now maybe we have a service. So let's create a new service. We'll call it a Java class. We'll say this is, maybe it's a user service to grab some users. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and, um, let's go ahead and annotate this with service. This is a spring um, stereotype, so we need to annotate that. And let's just say we had a method in here. Um, uh, we'll call it, let's say, uh, let's say public. This is going to return string. Uh, oops, get users. All right, so this is really just going to return users. Um, so right now, this is just a string. Uh, this is just for demo purposes. So now we have this 
we have this user service and we probably want to be able to access these methods inside of our controller. So our controller is kind of directing our application. Our service layer is doing the business logic and we need to pull that information out of that service layer. So back in our controller, we need an instance of our user service. Uh, we could go ahead and create that ourselves, but that's just really no fun. Part of the whole Spring Framework um, magic is the dependency injection capabilities that it gives us. So we used to be able to do this. We used to be able to say auto wired, whoops, and we still can by the way, um, but we could e easily say user service, user service, and that would be just fine. Now, I, we'll go into this into another video. I'll leave this discussion for for another for another day, but really this is field level dependency injection. And while this will work, um, there are some issues with this. This definitely becomes harder to test. And so what's recommended is either using constructor-based injection or property-based injection, or, or basically using a um, setter to set that particular property. So I like to lean the way of using a constructor-based injection. And again, we could leave that discussion for another day. But really what that looks like is hello controller. And I've been writing Groovy too much lately. And inside of this constructor, now what I would do is I can actually go back and create that again. So I'm going to have a property called user service, user service. And what I'm going to do is inside of my constructor here, it's going to take an argument of type user service. And really what we're doing here is setting user service equal to whatever we get here. So before 4.3, we needed to set that auto wired annotation on the controller constructor method here. So what that auto wired does is say, all right, I know that at, you know when the Spring Framework kind of gets going, it needs to inject that user service into the constructor, and now we have an instance of that user service that we can work with. And so what we could do is easily just come down here and say user service dot get users and again that's just gonna print out that user service string which was get users I think so now if we jump back to the documentation and look in the what's new in 4.3 we can say it's no longer necessary to specify the app auto wired annotation if the target bean only defines one constructor so that kinda sounds like us we only have one constructor in our target bean now, if we have multiple constructors here that take different parameters, then we're still going to need to use this. But we don't need to use this if we only have one constructor. And so that is definitely our case. So now everything looks good. We've created a field for our user service. We are, whoops, yep, we can go ahead and make this private. Um, so now we have a field for our user service. We have a constructor that takes an argument of type user service and we go ahead and set that. So without that auto wired, it's going to go ahead and inject that when it creates an instance of our hello controller. So let's go ahead and run this. Um, go ahead and back here. We'll go ahead and run auto wired application. Again, this isn't going to do much when this fires up. I'm going to basically go to localhost 8080 and the just a root and it's gonna call user service get users and so really all we should see is this users dot 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 printed to the screen alright so let's go localhost 8080 and there's our users so that was one of the kind of newer things in spring framework 4.3 again not huge just a little kind of subtle change but I think it's a nice one not you know there's no reason for us to have to declare this is that auto wired it you know it just knows now it knows that hey you probably want an instance of that user service injected into that constructor here so we're gonna look at some more pretty cool features in 4.3 and Spring Boot 1.4 
in some future videos. But for now, I hope this one helped. And if you liked it, please go ahead and subscribe below and give me that thumbs up. Thanks a lot, guys, and have a good one.